Hey folks, got my coffee ready. Ah, I'm gonna need it because today I'm writing some code. So I was working on a project as I typically do, and this one is a JavaScript project. By the way, I'm bouncing around between Python and JavaScript. It's pretty weird. So I'm getting some really interesting comparisons how these two languages are good at different things. I might even do some comparison videos on the speeds between them. Anyway, today we're doing JavaScript and I've discovered that there is a better way to sort, a much, much better way to sort than the default way that comes out of the box. Let me show you what I mean. I've got a little basic project here. It's a node project. We've got big sort .js, just one file. I'm going to open up my terminal, control backtick, and I run this using node big sort JS. All right, that was a mistake because I have 100 million items here. We'll get to that. Let's start off slow, okay? Let's go with 100,000. All right, we're done. So what's this program doing? First, it's creating a random array of numbers. And these are numbers from one to 100,000. And we also make 100,000 of these. Let's get stored in here. Then I just print out a few to make sure we're getting the correct data. I won't I won't need that after this. Here is where we're doing the sort. So this is the array sort function, the prototype function. Now I will use a different algorithm for sorting. And this is going to be much, much faster. So I'm going to show you that. It's called Tim sort, if anybody's heard of that. And then after Tim sort, which is actually a drop and replacement for the array sort prototype function, I'm going to show you a different sort, but that one only applies if you're sorting numbers. The regular array sort that we have here and Tim sort, they both sort different kinds of data, strings or numbers. So if you're doing that, I'd recommend Tim sort, and I'll show you why in a minute. But if you're going to be doing number sorting, there's a faster way. All right, so let me show you Tim sort for now. By the way, down here, we also print out the first five numbers after we've sorted. And also for those of you that are familiar with how array sorts in JavaScript, it sorts in place. So this source data actually gets modified in place and returns the new modified data. So even if I say console log source data at the end, it'll still show me the sorted data. Now you'll notice here, if you are sorting numbers, this is not what it's doing. In fact, what it's doing is it's lining up the numbers as strings and then ordering them as strings. If if you wanted to sort by numbers, by the value of the integer or floating point in this case, you have to provide a sorting function. And you can specify that by passing it in to the sort method of the array. So all you got to do is just say this function takes in two parameters, A and B. Those are presumably numbers, and it's going to return A minus B. Now, what it's going to do is sort numbers. So let's see what that looks like. And there we go. That's sorting numbers. This is kind of a uh, hard to read though, and it's not reusable. So what we're going to do is just create a separate function up here. I'm going to call it num sorter. It's going to take in a and B and it's going to do the same thing. Return a minus B. And what we're going to do is pass in num sorter into sort. There we go. Okay. So now we're sorting by numbers, but we're also sorting the array in place, which we don't want to do. I want to make a clone of the array and then sort the clone. So let's create a const called clone one. And in order to make a clone of an array quickly, all I got to do is just take the original array and call the function slice on it. Slice is a function that can give you a sub array, but if you don't call it with parameters, it's going to give you a copy of the same array. So clone one is our new array that we're going to be sorting. Okay. And when I print it out at the end, I'm going to use sorted and there we go. All right. Now let's get to the fun part, which is using Tim sort. You can find this package on NPM. Here it is. And there are a lot of people using it. So you might even know about it already, but maybe you don't know about the next sort I'm going to show you. So keep watching. Oh, and if you like this content, make sure to give it a like. <laughs> All right, let's get on with this. We're going to say npm install tim sort. Okay, we're going to use this. So back to our terminal. Let's clear it up and npm install dash dash save tim sort. And now I have tim sort available for me to import. So I'm going to do that up here. If you need the instructions, this shows you how to do it. There's a line of code that does it that imports it. Uh, I'm going to use const up here because that's the modern way of writing it. So now we've imported Tim sort and uh, then we have our array and then we just say Tim sort dot sort. So let's go down here. I'm going to make some space and I'm going to make another clone of this array. So const clone two equals source data slice and then const Tim sorted equals Tim sort dot sort and we're going to pass in clone two. Okay. And just to make sure that we are getting some sorted data out of there, I'm going to print it out after that. Let's run this and take a look. So we've got an error here. Ah, 
And that's because <laughs> Tim Sorted doesn't have the ambiguity that JavaScript's array have. It actually sorts the array right in place, so I don't need to set it equal to anything. Clone 2 will be sorted, okay? So that's what we need to print out. Let's clear that and run that again. And there we go. But Tim Sort is a drop and replacement for JavaScript sort. So what it's gonna do if not given a sorting function is it's also gonna sort by strings. So it's gonna take these as strings and sort them alphabetically and not as numbers. So we still need to pass in that second parameter, which is our num sorter function. Let's copy that and pass that into Tim sort. And finally, we can run this and we have the same results for the sorts. There we go. All right, so we've got both of these implemented here. Now we need to time them and figure out how long each one of these takes. We're gonna time only the sorting part of each one of these algorithms. And JavaScript has a nice little built-in thing here. We can say console time and give it a name. This is like the key. So I'm gonna call this one num sort, num sorter, okay? And when it finishes, we say console time end, and we have to give it the exact same name we gave it previously. What this will do is print out that name and how long that took between the time you started it and the time you finished it. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing and I'm gonna surround our Tim sort with another time entry and console time end, okay? But I need to give this a different name. Let's call this Tim sorter, okay? There we go. Now back on our console, let's run this and see what it says. So we got 22 milliseconds for the regular JavaScript sort and 36 for Tim sort. It seems to be that Tim sort is slower. Even if we run this a couple times, you'll see that it is slower. I'm going to give it a much larger number. I'm gonna give it 100 million here. Let's save that. And now let's run it. This might take a little bit of time. So I'll sip my coffee and sit back. <sighs> okay, num sorter is done. Where's our Tim sorter? Oh, look at that. Okay, so you see that it's two times faster for Tim sort for numbers that are pretty large. And that's the key here. Tim sort optimizes for very large data sets. And furthermore, you can do some more reading about Tim sort and it tells you what kind of data Tim sort is better at. So here's some examples. This is right on the NPM site for Tim sort. It tells you what type of data you have, descending, ascending, and so on. Uh, there's some repetitions, many repetitions or some repetitions, uh, and it does better or worse in those cases. You can do some reading here. We're dealing with random data and with very large sets, so we are getting a considerable speed up. Now, if you are dealing with only numbers, there is even a faster way to sort. I've only tested this with positive integers, you might need to do some tweaking of this to handle other integer types. But here we go. I'm going to show you one more method. So let's do a little separation here. I'm going to do yet another clone. Do that here. It's going to be clone three, source data slice. And instead of Tim sort, and let's just give it another name here. I'm going to call this float sort. What I'm going to do is create an array of a different data type. This is a specific data type in JavaScript that handles floats. So it's gonna be called a float array, and I'm gonna use a constructor, this one right here, float64 array, and I'm gonna pass in our array into that. So that's gonna initialize a new array that are optimized to deal with floats. So this array is going to be even faster at doing its sorting. The way we call it, as you would expect, float array dot sort. It kind of follows a pattern there. So this specifies that it can take a compare function, but because it knows that we're sorting numbers, you actually don't need to pass one in and it'll automatically know that we're sorting numbers. This also returns a new array. Let's just call it float sorted and uh, let's just print out just for the heck of it. First five numbers of float sorted to ensure that we are getting the correct results there. So. I'm gonna run this on two data sets actually. I wanna see how this does on small data sets too, because I haven't seen that. Let's do 100,000, not that small, but it made a big difference with Tim sort. So let's check it out. Aha, uh -huh, look at that. So all our results are the same. That's good. 20 milliseconds for the regular sorter, 41 for Tim sort, not surprisingly, eight milliseconds for the float sort. Wow, now let's do it for 100 million items. This is where I get to have my coffee again. A lot of numbers it's gonna take a while all right so the first one is done in 29 seconds just like last time consistency is nice i like that i'm gonna guess tim sword will finish around 15 seconds yes 15.578 now 
float. Let's see how long that takes. 11.575 seconds. 11 and a half seconds, folks. That is almost three times faster than regular sort. So if you're sorting numbers, this is a pretty cool way to do it. If you're looking for the repo of this code, link is in the description. You can check it out yourself. Subscribe, like this video. I'll see you next time.